What's good everyone, and welcome back to yet again another Aliens Fireteam video. In this video, I will focus on the different Xenomorph casts or types that I think we need in Aliens Fireteam. We've already seen a reveal of five types as of this video's recording, along with more to be shown soon of the apparent 20 or so special types. Some of these entries from different media will not be considered canon to Aliens as this game is canon, but that doesn't mean these Xenomorphs can't pop up and still not be considered canon. So without further ado, Let's rock. Starting off this list at number 10 is something you'd never want to see scurrying across the floors or walls, and that is the Royal Facehugger, a special variant of Facehugger that is capable of implanting an embryonic queen. These Facehuggers are bigger, stronger, and more resilient than your typical Facehugger and have the ability to impregnate two hosts, one for the queen and her bodyguard. So taking on this foe along with the other pests, you'd be sure to keep this one as far away from you as possible. Coming in at number 9, we have an Aliens Clonal Marines exclusive Xenomorph known as the Boiler. With this game being canon, or at least I still think so, I do not know whether Colonial Marines was retcon along with everything that appeared in it, but this special type was similar to that of the Bloater from the Left 4 Dead series. It offers similarities to other Xenomorphs, but the difference with this one is that it kamikazes itself exploding in a pool of acid blood. This unit could be an annoying enemy, as these types of enemies in games always keep players on their toes and show up in the most inconvenient times. At number eight, we have the albino drone. Not officially in the movies in any capacity, the albino drone was the original concept for the first Alien film. This xenomorph had a flesh-toned colored exoskeleton, along with an appendage different than that of the inner set of jaws we're used to. More tongue-like in appearance with a sharp tip on the end, seeing this sore thumb stick out amongst the hive could make for some fun and horrifying reactions from players. Cold Iron Studios could have fun with something like this drone due to its unique features and even going as far as giving the tongue a purpose similar to the smoker from Left 4 Dead, constricting players in place with its tongue allowing the hive to decimate its captive. The Crusher Alien is at number 7, and this wild variant is created when a Xenomorph sentry is force-fed royal jelly and raw metals for weeks, eventually transforming into this beast, known as the defensive protectors of the hive and crushing anything in its path with its charging ability given the name. Its head crest is completely bulletproof and able to withstand and soak up massive amounts of damage. This alien would really keep your team on its toes and test your strategic ability to dodge its charge while juggling the rest at the same time. Number six, we have the Rogue Alien, or otherwise known as the Alien King. The Rogue was the result of genetic splicing experiments, and its purpose was to be a tame counterpart to Alien Queens and to control other Xenomorphs, which ironically it was aggressive towards other natural Xenos. I feel as if this entry could be a boss battle featuring no other Xenos unless controlled by itself, otherwise you'd be taking this rage-filled beast on with your team. It seems to only be aggressive towards those that show threat, so the more heat you're packing, the more fight it'll put up essentially, and as a boss battle, this one would be a fun change to most straightforward boss battles. Number five, we have the Palatine Alien. This xenomorph resembles a queen-sized praetorian or drone. They pose as the queen mother's bodyguard, the queen mother being the supreme controlling force of the species. The much larger palatine variants are extremely aggressive and possess greater resilience to damage. This unit could be your typical tank-like unit that takes more than your average beating, towering above other xenos and making their presence known. Here at number four, we have probably a more sillier variant, but just as deadly of a xeno which is the Gorilla Alien. Stepping into the territory of ridiculous mashups of Xenomorphs, this was yet another variant from a facehugger impregnating a four-armed alien species. This unit was featured in different games, most notably the Aliens Infestation DS game. Maybe this one would be too much to really put into a serious game like Fireteam, but since it appeared in other media, maybe they could bring it back on a more serious scale. Coming in at number three, we have an original monstrosity to the Prometheus film. The Trilobite was a massive octopus-like creature similar to the facehuggers and only purpose is to impregnate a host with a deacon, which is our next entry. Very strong and resilient, not much else is known about this creature, but it is just as terrifying in every aspect, being that its only mission is to impregnate its host so that, that in that right, it's even more terrifying. It may not have much place in an Aliens game, given the time frame of Prometheus, but it deserves its due in games as well as the last two entries. At number two, we have the second Prometheus edition, and that is the Deacon. The Deacon is the result of the Trilobite's impregnation of the Engineer. 
the Deacon features different features than that of any Xenomorph, but nonetheless is equally as terrifying. Having not seen what the creature is capable of on the big screen, taking it to the game space could let the devs go any route they please for the game, even giving it an adult life cycle stage. Number one on our list of Xenos, well in this case Neo, is a Neomorph from the Alien Covenant film. The Neomorphs were the result of ecosystem contamination from the mysterious black liquid. Similar to the Xenos in most aspects from life cycle to features, the spawns were reminiscent of a runner type and fully grown into a bipedal stance. Its most notable features is its white skin with a somewhat translucent appearance. It's far more feral than your typical xenomorph, so facing off one of these creatures would net you with a showdown unlike any of the normal xenomorphs, and what better game to make its debut than Aliens Fireteam. I don't know about anyone else, but this is one of my favorite aspects of Aliens Covenant, being that we haven't seen too many different types of xenomorphs without being too similar to each other. That covers our main list, but here is an honorable mention. The Pred Alien. Crossing into AVP territory, I don't see very many people opposing the idea of the Pred Alien making a crossover appearance between Predator and Aliens. This would be the perfect crossover timing and could be involved between Predator Hunting Grounds and Aliens Fire Team as a perfect excuse to mash these two IPs together again. This special unit could come along with a special mission dedicated to it and any reason it would be rampaging around and needing the Colonial Marines to come in and sweep up the target. We need more AVP so if we don't get it anytime soon, this addition would be fine enough for me for this game. These were 10 interesting, wacky, and frightening xenomorphs I think we need in Aliens Fire Team. I don't see any reason to stick with the current game's cast of xenomorphs, so to keep the game lively, I could see Cold Iron Studios adding more types into the fray to keep the game fresh, challenging, and interesting. Cold Iron Studios, if you're watching this video, you must know that a lot of Aliens fans would love to see additional content, and that means Aliens too. And there's a lot of interesting things you could work with, so here's a list of my own. What aliens would you like to see in a game that you haven't spotted? yet any choices you'd like to see that even wouldn't make the game by any means let me know in the comments thank you for all the support and thank you for watching and peace for now